So at this point you've already done the hardest part of this tutorial series, which is having the initiative to come to the second video, part 2. A lot of the people who probably watched part 1 bailed out because they psyched themselves out, told themselves they couldn't do it, but not you, you're motivated, you're determined, and because of that you're actually going to learn shader nodes as long as you just keep sticking with these videos. So thank you for coming to part 2, and I think today we're going to actually go into how some of these nodes work very lightly, again we want to take this in baby steps, but before we do any of that we of course need to set up our workspace, and we talked about how to do this in part 1. So already I have this default scene in Blender, I didn't do anything to it, I don't think, just in case I'll just restart it. There we go, so this is definitely a default scene. So what we need to do is go to the shading workspace like we talked about, and the way I like to do this, like we talked about again, is to get rid of some of these windows that are cluttering our view. So we don't need this file browser, we can collapse that, we don't need this image editor, just say bye bye to the image editor, and then finally this outliner can absolutely go bye bye. So let's just get rid of that. So again, 3D viewport is left over, this is for viewing. Shader editor is kind of this mysterious thing right now, but this is where we do our node networks. And then finally we have our properties, which is just this thing to the right that we kind of don't mess with that much. So, okay, it's time to actually get into nodes. Get ready, we're going to keep it simple. So right now we have our cube selected, and you want to notice that when we have our cube selected, we have a material. It's called material, we can call it anything else, like... I don't know, what's creative? Probably the word creative is creative. So now this cube has a material applied to it called creative, and this is the only material. If you look at this list, there's only one material. We can get rid of it and create a new material. Call it, I don't know, we can call it second, as in second material. And now when you go to our list, we have creative and we have second. And you're gonna notice that our nodes look the same for both creative and for second, and that's because whenever you create a material there is a default node setup that is automatically generated. So you make a material and it just already gives you these two nodes, and because we didn't manipulate anything these two materials look the same. So for example, if we take our creative material, select a node by just, you know, clicking it. Nothing crazy here, you just click things, you deselect by clicking in the background, but let's say we click it, hit G, just like any other part in Blender, you hit G for grab and we move it. So now it's the same two nodes, it still has the same nodes, the same connections, everything's the same, but we separated these out. Notice that when we go to second, these are now close together, and then creative, separated. So even though they're composed of the same nodes, these networks are distinct. You know, this one's keeping the distance that we made. So there we go, we have a cube with a material applied to it, but the point I was trying to get at is if we select something else, like a light, all the material stuff disappears. Same for the camera but when we select the cube again, it all comes back. And this is the idea of materials as something you see on the surface of an object or maybe the interior of an object, and it doesn't really make sense for a camera to have a material. A light, there's an argument for it to have a material. It would basically say how the light shines, but generally we only slap materials onto geometry. So cube's geometry, we can get rid of this with X and then delete, replace it with a, I don't know, we can replace it with a cylinder. And right now this doesn't have a material assigned to it, so we have it selected, but there's nothing here. So we can either create a new material, or select one of these materials that we have before. So you basically have a list of materials that you can apply to any object. It's not every object has its own list of materials and it's private. No, you just have materials and you can apply them to anything. And since we talked about materials just being a collection, for our node networks, we kind of want to get rid of the traditional idea of materials, and again, just think of a material as a node network. So the creative material is one node network, and the second material is another node network. So how do we actually manipulate the material? In other words, how do we actually manipulate the nodes? So in this case, you're going to notice that our cylinder has the creative material applied to it, and it's just kind of looking like this white, not like marble or anything, it just kind of looks plain white, nothing interesting about it. And we can kind of already tell why this is the case, we don't really know what any of these nodes do, but just by investigating, we have two nodes, one here, one here, and by the way, you zoom in by scrolling, move by holding the middle mouse, pretty much what you'd expect. But we have two nodes and they are connected, and notice that this node, this monstrosity, this is probably one of the biggest nodes that exists here, has a whole bunch of sliders, but also it has this color socket. So essentially we can select this color, like that, and it's going to let us select a color from our color wheel, and we could pick something like red, and it automatically updates. That's curious, it kind of indicates that this is storing a lot of information and sending it through this connection, it's sending it to this node right here. 
Well, what's this one called? It's called material output. Everything is kind of adding up. You know, it's called material output, and this is what we're seeing. It's what the material is outputting. It's what we're visualizing. And notice that this node, which you can think of as all our information, it's basically saying make it red, make it a certain amount of metallic, as you see this is making it more metallic. So all this information is basically being sent to the surface. You can see it's in the surface input. We call these things inputs. So in this node, we have inputs on this side and then outputs, well, only a single output on this side. So output is something you send out, input is something you take in, pretty obvious. But this is being sent to the surface input, indicating that all this information is being slapped onto the cylinder on the surface, meaning the shell of it, the exterior. And that's something we're not very used to thinking of. So for example, the cylinder, you kind of think of it as this solid object made of stone or clay or whatever you want to think of it as, but really the cylinder is a hollow shell. So if we go into edit mode and, you know, delete a face here, it's this hollow shell that doesn't have any volume. It doesn't have any interior. So let me just set this back. So this is what it means to put it in the surface output. You're only putting it on the shell of the cylinder. Instead, if we use the volume input, not necessarily with this node, but if we connected something to the volume input, that'd be something that occupies 3D space and it has kind of thickness to it. So in general, we use surface, the surface input for, you know, pretty much everything you can think of, cylinders, cubes, machines, anything you can model and you just put that material, whatever you have for it, it's gonna be put on the surface of the object. But use volume for things like volumetrics, volume, volumetrics, those are things like smoke, fire, mist, anything that has density and actually occupies space and doesn't actually have a shell. These are things that we use volume for. And then finally, we have displacement in our material output node. And this is something we're not going to mess with for a while, but it lets us deform the geometry. It changes the shape of it based off of whatever instructions we give it from nodes here, whatever we plug in. So in general, we're mainly going to be messing with the surface input since we just have normal objects and we want to code it with a material. Volume, maybe when we start talking about smoke and all that, we'll get into it. And then displacement, in a while, we'll get into it. It is actually very important. So already, we already know, since we talked about it a lot, we have a lot of information here. It's being sent to the surface here. And notice that if we switch now to our second, we didn't change the color of this one. It's still white. So we get this white material, nothing special here. Again, here we can change the color to blue. So now we have a blue material. You can just rename this. So this is our blue material. And then we can just switch back to our creative red material. And again, materials are just node networks, or so switching between node networks or node graphs, whatever you want to call them. And yeah, I mean, we can tweak all these sliders, but that really doesn't matter for us. So we've talked about what this node does. We've kind of hinted at what this node does, but what is this connection? Okay, it's sending information, but what does that really mean? Well, what we can do is we can take this connection, so it's going into here, we can click, drag, and then just drop it off anywhere, and that will disconnect it, and now we have this black, which kind of indicates, again, this isn't a black material, it's not black on the surface, but really it's a lack of a material, so whenever we don't have a material, it's going to default to this black, and then we can do the opposite, we can select this output, click, drag, and bring that over here, and now, in our surface, we have this node feeding into it. We can also do something like this. We take this node, Shift D to duplicate, just like any other part in Blender. So Shift D, we're going to make this one a different color just to distinguish them. And we can say we want this one. So we put it in the surface input. It's going to swap it out because you can only have one thing being what's in the input. You can't have both green and red. You have to choose. So we can switch between them just like that. And this really indicates that the connection is feeding information into this output node. And we don't have to disconnect and connect the way we've been doing. There are shortcuts for this. Again, make sure you have Node Wrangler enabled and you have everything set for what we're doing here. But instead of disconnecting and reconnecting, the shortcuts for these are, let's say we're trying to connect this node to this one. We can hold down Alt, the Alt key, and then right-click drag. So from here to somewhere around this area. Notice that I'm not being very precise. I'm putting it over here and it's still going red. And then I let go of my mouse and it automatically connects. This is called lazy connect because we're being very lazy and we're not putting it exactly on this dot right here, which can be an issue if you're very zoomed out. So again, hold alt, right click, drag, lazy connect. We can now do this one to switch it. I actually didn't switch it. It basically has some kind of intelligence to it. So it saw our surface was already taken up. So it just went down the list. So let's actually disconnect these and now it should go back to the surface. So Alt, right drag, 
and it automatically goes to our surface. And then we also want some kind of equivalent for cutting a connection. And instead of Alt, this time we're gonna use Control. So Control, hold that down and then right click. And then let's just drag that over here. And you can see we get this line, which you can think of as a knife tool. So we just drag that over and it severs our connection. So Alt, right click and then Control, right click. And this is the fast way to do it. And if we have multiple connections like this, so we have something in the surface, something in the volume. And again, this doesn't really make sense. This node going into the volume, we'll talk about why that is the case. We can hold down control, right click, and I think we should be able to sever multiple connections. So there you go. We've talked about nodes kind of without knowing what they do in this very interesting way, but we kind of want to just think about this as a flow of information. And then in the next tutorial, we'll talk about what the nodes actually do specifically. And there's actually a lot of nodes. All this, everything you're seeing here is nodes. So we have a lot to go through. But there you go, I just want you to focus on a material being a node network, and you can have multiple materials. So with this cylinder selected, we go to this, and now we have this node network. So again, materials are node networks, and in node networks, we're sending information from one node to another, and we send that information through connections that can be established or cut. So I think that's everything for this tutorial. Again, nothing too crazy, we're just building up our information. I hope everything was understandable, and thank you guys for having the initiative to learn and shader nodes i am impressed with you kind of you know i do i do like people learning about nodes it's one of my more favorite things about blender i like the technical aspect of it but we're not going to get any more confusing in part three so i'm looking forward to it and i hope to see you there